Welcome to the sag Foundation's Conversations at Home program. I'm Pia Senna Roy. Before we are joined by our guest today, I want to let you know that the sag Foundation is a non-profit organization that relies entirely on donations to provide emergency assistance and free educational programs to the sag after artists. This conversation is made possible thanks to the generosity of our supporters. Over the past year, the foundation has given over $6.5 million in COVID relief to more than 7,000 performers. If you're a sag after artist and need help, please ask. And if you can help, please give. Information can be found in the description of this video. Thank you for your support. Now, without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce Haley Steinfield and Jane Krakowski from Dickinson. Hi, so good to meet both of you. Um, and uh, I'm really excited to get into Dickinson um, because it's uh, it's such an interesting take on the genre. And I really enjoyed watching um, the kind of evolution of the characters in season two. Uh, so I'm going to kick off with, uh, to, this is a question for both of you, but what were you both excited to do with your respective characters that you hadn't been able to do in season one, but really got to dig into in season two? Ooh, um, I go first. Uh, I think for me, season one for Emily was all about winning the right to to become a writer, to be able to call herself a writer Mm. um, comfortably to herself in front of her family. Um, And so I was very much looking forward to kicking off season two with with having won that right to to become a writer. Um, My father in season two is far more accepting of it. Um, and I'm able to, you know, sit in that room at that desk and not feel like if somebody comes through the door, I have to immediately hide what I'm, what I'm working on. Um, I was always in my room writing and that was a very known thing and accepted nonetheless, but as far as, you know, Mm -hmm. the family went, um, also season two dives into this whole world of, of, technology and and celebrity culture uh and fame um and that was a fun thing to explore given what you know we see in that as far as all that goes now um Mm -hmm. I was looking forward to doing you know digging into that as well yeah and Jane for you how did Mrs. Dickinson evolve for you this season uh, well, in season one, Mrs. Dickinson was definitely representing the old school guard. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, in the device of the show is its its acronistic take on the world of Emily Dickinson. Um, but in season one, I think Mr. and Mrs. Dickinson had to represent the traditionalism, the patriarchal society. Um, and they did that very strongly, um, what their beliefs in were for, for Emily. Um, in season two, I was very, very pleased to see Mrs. Dickinson take her hair down, so to speak, <laughs> um, and become more in the device of the whole show, of becoming a bit more of a modern woman. Um, mm-hmm. And literally take, letting her hair down, um, clearly... Uh, growing a bit hornier in season two <laughs> and fully more accepting of her, her daughter and the, the more modern choices that she wants to make. I definitely think that, you know, when I know that this, this series is framed around a coming of age story for Emily Dickinson, but I actually think Mrs. Dickinson, you know, is going through that same process as well. It's really fascinating to see the mother daughter evolution that's so interesting that you say that because I do believe that the character is having her own reckoning as well mm-hmm. um, and, and continues into season three, um, which hopefully we'll talk about at another time. Yeah. But um, the realizing that a woman can be uh, a woman and not under the patriarchal stamp at all times. And I think she learns that from her daughters uh, taking, mm-hmm. making their own decisions and not following that pattern that has been very set up by society. Um, And so in a way it is, even though they're very different generationally, it's nice to see that they both have um, a blossoming, so to speak. Yeah. Um, I'm curious to know, Haley, for you, what did you find particularly compelling within Emily's struggles um, in this season, especially when it came to like the concept of fame? Because in the first season she was, as you mentioned, you know, sort of uh, doing her writing in secret. In second season, you know, she's starting to get published and and there's a fame element and she struggles with that yeah I mean I think that one thing I I was comforted by 
to be to be playing someone that that feels so decisive mm-hmm. um who writes what she writes and and doesn't hold back in the slightest she touches on every possible subject that she can think of um you know shamelessly unapologetically at that point knowing that nobody's reading it right but but she 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 writes as if no one will will ever will ever read it and it's it's unbelievable that that people got the chance to to do so um because i i feel like as a side note that's that's sort of this new approach that i have been inspired to take uh with my work in general and with writing specifically um but i think i found it quite interesting right that there is a world in which she must have questioned whether or not she really wanted something like this having spent the majority of her life in one space writing for a select few uh you know is it's it's crazy to think that she went she might have gone back and forth on the idea so much um right. but i think that you know in season 2 she's she's confused by by the the glitter of of Sue's new life and and the you know allure to to being published by Sam um but in the end she she reaffirms that you know her true artistic soul wants to write for love and not fame uh mm-hmm. and that that is the whole journey of of season 2 that that we are taken on I mean, she's also going through this kind of intense emotional roller coaster. She deals with the death um, of someone she came close to. She has this mm. all consuming crush. Um, you know, how do you think those things start to impact her in this season? I mean, they, they, they impact her greatly on so many different. I mean, she, she ultimately hits a point of, of writer's block. And, mm. and that's something that she has never experienced. She puts her hand down to the paper and and it loses it has a mind of its own um and and suddenly she just sits there staring for anything longer than normal and and she doesn't know what's happening physically and emotionally and mentally there are so many changes happening and and you know she is consumed by this person and by that person and confused with this and that and frustrated and and excited by and intrigued and there's so much mystery that comes with Sam Bowles and, you know, are his intentions pure? Is he interested in her or the work? Is Sue um, pushing her towards something that is, you know, for her benefit or for Emily's? Uh, mm-hmm. It's, 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 it's a lot. So it impacts her greatly uh, to the point of, of, you know, a huge, a huge roadblock, um, literally and, and figuratively. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do yeah I, th- I think it's so interesting to see you know it's sort of have those lines filled in that we didn't really ever know about the real Emily Dickinson and so to be able to go back and reimagine what her life could have been is so fascinating in these moments mm-hmm. um what what do you find um within a character that, that what do you connect to specifically within playing her that you enjoy so much I I love the idea I mean, first of all, to use her poetry as such a driving force. Mm-hmm. One thing I love so much about her poetry in general is that I truly feel like I never understand it the first few times I read it. And that's what keeps me going back to it is just this yeah. like determination of figuring out what the heck <laughs> was going through her mind. And to be able to make this show and dive into what we think that might have looked like um, has been so fun. And to to play a character that felt so ahead of her time and so um, just ahead of the curve, so to speak. And and I don't know, I, I, I go back to Elena Smith all, all the time on this because she has had just, I mean, she has this unbelievable ability to almost see into the future <laughs> with this show. I find that with each season, I am either in that moment in my life or we are in that moment in our time and, and, whether it confuses me or helps me come up with a better understanding, uh, it's it's challenged me nonetheless. Each and every day, this show has has absolutely challenged me and um, tested me, and I am so grateful for that because even with a season three coming into season three, it's like you know, just when you think you know we'd be comfortable and we are, and we've created such a beautiful foundation and such a wonderful family that I'm so grateful to walk away with. 
Um, but it, it, you know, just when I think I'm like, okay, season three, I've got this down. I know this character, I like get the first script and I'm like, oh boy, what a lot to unpack here. And I've never not felt that way about this show. And I think that's the best, the best yeah. thing ever. It's really kept me on my toes. Yeah, I, I think it's um, it's fascinating to see those kind of parallels into our current society. And I think that's what, you know, this show does so brilliantly. Jane, I wanted to ask you kind of more specifically about how you and perhaps you and Haley talked about Mrs. Dickinson and Emily's relationship this season. Um, you know, I always feel like they have these really great tension filled like back and forths. Um, and I wanted to know, you know, kind of what you felt like you wanted to dive di deeper into between the two of them. Yeah, well, I feel like, I feel like me personally as an actress yeah. always looks for the comedic side of mm -hmm. the scenes um, and what I can find within this time period and where the comedy lie for that and for what Elena is going for and what is in on the pages. I think what I was most thankful for in season two and what I loved because it made Mrs. Dickinson a much more fully rounded person and a more real person because once we got to know a little bit of her heart and her own insecurities and her own true feelings that you can then, I felt from early on in season two, once she exposed some of her genuine feelings and fears that we were able to then follow her story and her person a lot more because she became much more of a real person, mm -hmm. not just a comedic device, not just a person who flies through the scene and does something funny here, or adds some of the plot here. She actually became a more fully developed mm -hmm. human and character that we care about um, in season two with the scenes that delved deeper into her feelings and her heart. Um, and I felt extreme, extremely lucky to have gotten the scene with Haley in the spa um, between mother and daughter, because I think that yeah. developed our story so much. Mm -hmm. um, in season one, we definitely had to have, we had to be a bit at odds. Um, and Mrs. Dickinson had to stand for her traditional beliefs that you get married off young and that you move on. Um, and I think actually the character of Emily Dickinson Jr. makes Mrs. Dickinson a more modern woman Mm -hmm. Emily Dickinson Sr., me, the part I play, makes yeah. her much more of a modern woman by learning why Emily is the way she is and allowing her to be who she is. And I was very moved by that, like allowing your children to be who they are. Don't try to transform them into who you want them to be or what you think they should be. Let them live and thrive as who they are. And I think that was a big moment for Mrs. Dickinson to realize it and to step up and still be a good parent, knowing that it was not gonna go that way. And yeah. I also love all my scenes with Haley because <laughs> Haley is such a brilliant actress, super fun to be with, incredibly professional, but she does, she tells the truth all the time. And yeah. she demands that you find the truth too. And I greatly appreciate that. You can still, I think we can still have all the humor and all the fun as well, but it's nice mm -hmm. to be able to find the truth um, amidst all of that. And I think Haley demands it. And I, I thank her for that. I love that. Yeah, I think it's great when you have, when you're able to sort of push each other to those moments where you can find that true authenticity in, in a scene. Um, I'm curious to know, you know, whether any, are there any influences or any like inspirations you kind of look towards for both of your characters? Uh, anything that you wanted to draw from specifically and weave into your portrayals? Um, thanks Jane for saying those things. <laughs> um, I would say I, I, I've just really become more fascinated than ever just by, by human behavior in general. And I feel like I have picked up on so many, um, <laughs> just so many things in the last few years of making this show that I've been able to take just, just from, you know, uh, living in New York city uh, and, and being in the, the best place to, you know, go have lunch by yourself and oh, the things you'll see. Uh, <laughs> I feel like there, there are so there, there, there were quite a few references that I, that I had that I would literally call Elena and say, you know, this is happening. I just saw this or whatever, whatever. And she's like, great. We have that montage thing where you can do that thing in the mirror and you can do exactly what you just saw on Instagram or whatever it was. Um, I, I, I felt like I was able to pull in a lot of, of things that I had become a lot more aware of going on around me, um, which was kind of fun. That's cool. Yeah. Jane, for you, was there any, any, anything you were looking towards or weaving into your performance? 
Sure. I think, I think for me, I, I, I like to pull from the truth of my own feelings mm -hmm. about different things. And I think in season two, Elena wrote a few topics that really struck a chord in me personally. Um, and I think a bit like Haley, through conversations that we had about our characters early on in season two, because the characters took quite a jump from the end of season one to season two, yeah. we all, I felt, needed to have a dialogue with Elena Smith to see where she wanted our characters to be, and then for us to have that as a jumping off point for us to keep going. And um, I had many talks with Elena about how I wanted to dive more into who Mrs. Dickinson is deep inside. And I mm -hmm. think I personally just had a very um, strong connection to women of different generations who didn't have the same opportunity that I have had and that Haley will have even more of. And I think um, that influenced me a lot with Mrs. Dickinson in season absolutely representing repression of women and those mm -hmm. types of women. Um, and, and, Generally, generationally, there are always those those blocks, but we're getting closer and closer to having less less, less of them. Um, mm -hmm. And my mother, particularly, just sort of missed women's lib and feminism. And I think she always has a little bit inside of her that is uh, a little bit bum that she kind of just missed that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I think I see a bit of that in Mrs. Dickinson as well as I want to be able to break her free of that and let her um, find, find freedom and, and advances and modernism in the world and the constraints that she has. Right, yeah, that absolutely makes sense. And I think it's, it's so, you bring up Alina a lot, obviously. Uh, Alina Smith is uh, the, the creator showrunner. Um, and I'm really curious to know what, you know, she, I, I, what I love about the show is that it does break through a lot of the molds and the traditions of even like period drama and comedy like genre you know tropes and things like that so I'm curious to know you know what you feel Alina brings so Elena sorry Elena brings so uniquely to this story and why she's kind of the the person to tell it oh my gosh I mean I I this I I would love to I I she is the I, I was like speechless when I think of how she even could have come up with how she continues to come up with um, this, you know, these concepts for this show, uh, you know, for characters specifically, um, she just constantly blows me away. Uh, and her and I have been sidebarring quite a lot this, this, you know, last season we've been working on um, just about, how, how, how much we've accomplished and, and through these characters, you know, who lived in a time where not a whole lot went on <laughs> mm -hmm. um, in, in, you know, outside of, uh, you know, their, their, what happens in, in their world, I guess I should say there's quite a lot that happens, but, you know, Emily going out into the wider world is her going across the street to the evergreens. I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> we're, we're not, we weren't working with a whole lot, but um, she just continues to blow me away and coming up with one, these, these concepts or not even concepts necessarily, but she touches on all these subjects that are so still so prominent and still so important and still so um, worth talking about and hearing about and, and watching. Uh, and one thing that got me from the very beginning with this show was how, how it, um, it just doesn't hold back in that sense. Mm -hmm. She really is has done such a, a, a beautiful and tasteful job of telling so many different types of stories within this one. Uh, there are so many types of relationships um, and struggles and obstacles and ups and downs, and there's amazing humor and there's real, there's the reality of the time that they were living in, which was not funny and which was not wonderful and comfortable and glamorous and um, desirable uh, and, she just, she, she, she gets it all. And, and, you know, she got a wonderful group of people together to, to execute it all. And I'm, I'm very proud of, of, of all of it, but I mean, why her and no one else? I don't even, I can't even think yeah. this has been her thing from, from day one. I mean, I can't, it's it would be amazing. It's absolutely yeah. her baby. I mean, she, 
uh, studied Emily Dickinson for a very long time. She's very aware of her life and the findings over the years of what people believe was Emily Dickinson's life. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe, I mean, maybe five or six years even before we got made on Apple TV Plus, she was already having this idea and wanting, knowing that she wanted to make it happen somewhere at some time. Um, and as, 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 as Haley says, she got a, an incredible group of designers to make that whole world come to life so beautifully. Um, a, a group of interesting, wacky, different, comedic, serious actors to portray all of the people mm -hmm. in, the, in this world. Um, one of my favorite things is all the guest stars that we've had. I mean, we have like these incredible people from comedy, from stand up, from other shows you love and different walks of life come in and they're like they nail like a historic person in the most crazy way you've ever seen <laughs> that person be depicted um and I'm always like really like like John Mulaney's coming <laughs> like, <laughs> like I'm always like that's amazing like that and they, they always get to work with Haley which is awesome um being the center of the story <laughs> but I'm like I always want to come in and at least meet them in the trailer yeah. you say hi as a fellow fan <laughs> Yeah, I, I do think it's it's amazing to see kind of this this story and how it's shaped. I want to ask you a little bit about that because, you know, um, going breaking with the kind of traditions of the genre. And I love, Haley that you're saying that, you know, sometimes you're sort of looking at the things around you in your present day, Instagram, whatever, and then weaving those references back in. Um, tell me a little bit about kind of playing with the, you know, kind of, there's so much sort of conversation around authenticity of time period, but I actually like that you kind of break with that and you bring the authenticity of a present day time period into that. So just tell me about that process of weaving present with, with period and how that works for you guys. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's fun to think about the fact that, I mean, who, who says that people didn't curse then, right? <laughs> I mean, they might've had their own curse words or different curse words, but they prop they still got angry they still are, are human, you know, and had ways of, of dealing with things that, um, you know, it's just fun to, to think about how they might have done that and, yeah. and how it might not have been so different than how we deal with things today, right? Mm -hmm. um, given their obvious circumstances, which we do take into account, uh, the language is probably the most modern thing about this show. And at times where I have maybe bumped with a line here or there because I'm like, okay, this is like, so this is like what kids 10 years younger than me are saying, I'm going to have to really figure this out. Um, it's, it's something that uh, it, it really does help the, sh you know, tell, tell this, this story in a way that, that feels real uh, and, and, and even more relevant than, than it might feel if it was this, you know, very strictly period show. Um, and it's been so fun to, to have conversations in the hair and makeup trailer about how we can maybe, you know, push the envelope a little here. And uh, Emily had a very, you know, very specific from what we know from the one photograph that we've seen of her, uh, that center, that very dead center part uh, with a low bun over the ears. Um, my hairstylist that I've been working with for three years on the show now, him and I have like looked at each other at times and we're like, okay, how can we spice this up a bit? <laughs> and we'll look at modern references and we'll look at period references and we'll kind of merge the line as best we can to keep it uh, so that we're still telling the story in a way that doesn't feel distracting. But uh, it's just been really fun to sort of weave those references in throughout, um, you mm -hmm. know, with the, with the language, with the wardrobe, with the hair, all of that. Yeah. Um, it, it's just fun to watch because it feels so it feels very kind of of its time, but also, I, and it's also, I guess, tapping into those themes that are universal and timeless as well, you know, like a lot of the struggles that Emily and Mrs. Dickinson have gone through back then are still kind of relevant today. And so hmm. um, it's great to see those parallel, those threads being woven through. Um, I'm curious to know, uh, and, and Jane, you touched a little bit on this with the guest stars, but I'd love to know, you know, for, for both of you, you know, what were some of your favorite sequences or is there one favorite sequence um, that you particularly love filming this season? Two, two, well, three things come to mind. I'll ramble mm -hmm. them off quickly. One, the fact that Wiz Khalifa is a part of our show <laughs> is quite possibly the coolest thing ever. And I will never get over it. I love um, that. Anything I have with him ever is just like, 
the, the, the stories that come out of it. I, I, there are moments that I'm like, I wish I had a pen and paper right now to write this down. Um, so, so wonderful. He is amazing. And, and what, what a cool thing he brings to our show that, that nobody else could. Um, the, the whole spa situation yeah. was really a lot of fun. Um, we were in a, I don't even remember where we were, Jane, maybe you do. It was a very random place and it was far and it was weird. And I think it was like raining outside and it was, <laughs> uh, there's a whole bunch going on and we were all in this small space ultimately, uh, well, at times. Um, but we were just running through these crazy montage bits and, and it was just so fun. And, and one of those moments I had on this show where I'm like, one moment I'm having a conversation with death. The next moment I'm having this unbelievably vulnerable conversation with my mom and the next I'm getting like water pounds of water dumped <laughs> on my head and like you know just one of those things and then last but not least um our opera episode I think mm -hmm. is the most special one of the most special parts of season two um the scope of the episode alone is just unreal and I think it really pushed us all to go to another level and and that was a moment too where you know, the majority of this show uh, is shot either on a stage or one particular um, exterior location. And anytime we get to venture out of that, it feels mm -hmm. like a field trip. And it's so fun. We're kind of outside of our, our what we know. And it's fun to kind of, you know, immerse ourselves into a new sort of world. And where we were, where we shot, that was so beautiful. And it was just the costumes there were unbelievable. I, I remember hearing about them before we started shooting the season. It was all about the opera dresses. And by the time we got there, it was just a really beautiful and exciting thing but the the acting in that episode from everybody is so superb and and the the story everything sort of comes to a head in that episode and and i love it a lot anyway that, those are my, that's yeah. my answer. those are good ones yeah jada love to hear yours <laughs> those are all great <laughs> um i mean there are some i mean individually for the characters like for growth of character mm -hmm. um i i enjoyed being in the hole with mr dickinson <laughs> Um, and the whole was one of those scenes where like, we're like, what? We're going to be in the whole, like, you know, on the page, it wasn't that understandable. And we, uh, the director of that episode happened to have also shot in a hole on another show. And so she knew how to make and shoot in a hole, which I was like, well, I mean, what are the chances? Like, <laughs> so that was really uh, memorable. And I, that was a, a big growth moment I thought for Mrs. Dickinson. Um, the opera was just on a whole nother level mm -hmm. um, and it was fun for all us to sort of be on this field trip of bringing our show to a new grander level mm -hmm. um, and all being together um, in, in the most special design terms that, that we sort of bring to the table at Dickinson. Um, I loved the spa because it was with all of our ladies mm -hmm. um, and Jessica Hecht, who I love, who plays my sister. Um, I think she brings such an essence to every role she plays. And I was so thrilled when she was going to be playing my sister. Um, and she sort of takes charge in that episode and as our guide. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think she set a tone for the comedy in that episode. Mm -hmm. And um, I, we, I certainly followed suit and um, I think we all did. I, for some reason, can't get out of my memory, you being drenched with that water. <laughs> it wanted to be like flash dance, but it really was more of a torture device. <laughs> And they made you do it a bunch more times than I thought they would. Yes. Um, and they, you know, that's when I love it when the whole team pitches in, meaning Haley's game, that it's shot stunningly. Mm -hmm. um, the design team went out, I thought, hit it out of the park in that spa mm -hmm. with it being is it therapeutic? Is it abusive? Is it like you just didn't know what it was? Is it, mm -hmm. is it? sadomasochistic like I'm not sure what it all was but it lived in the world of the story and told the story to a higher um to a higher level of, of style and um and we did that one a lot and that was fun it was fun for us all to um get our final relief as women and then say we're fine we can go home now yeah. um <laughs> the times were crazy then um <laughs> but yeah there's there's so many so many moments sometimes the moments are just when we're in our home base 
and we all have to find what the scene's about mm-hmm. and whether it's mm-hmm. just telling the truth around our dining room table where we have a lot of scenes there or in our parlor mm-hmm. and to me that work the work of that of finding what the truth is for all of our characters and getting to bounce off of each other certainly i have a great actor playmate in toby huss who probably if i'm right haley makes us all laugh the most <laughs> in between I mean. It's even sometimes absurd. in dance because he yeah. says words that no one else does them. He says things weird, and we all think it's funny. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, there's all those there's all those joys, and and every episode ends up having a slightly different tonal uh, sensibility of all the directors that come in and bring mm. their uh, their sensibility and their talents to our show. The one scene I wish I was in, and Haley knows this, and. I don't know if I'm ever going to get a chance on Dickinson was the big dance number that your choreographer did at the end of season two. Oh, man. I was obsessed. I, I, why does it become a hundred times cooler? At least it does to me in this world when we're wearing the corsets and those outfits mm-hmm. and they start like doing that stop beat stuff and you're just like, oh, <laughs> so cool. It's a little bit like having Wiz come into our world. The, mm, it's such yeah. a clash of styles that to me, it brings it to a like such a cool factor level. Yeah. It, I think I Haley promised me I was gonna get to learn that dance with her personal <laughs> at some point. That, yeah, it, it's going to happen, Jane. <laughs> it's still on the table, right, Haley? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I won't ever show anybody, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I think we would like to actually see that. I'm sure there's there's something in the story we could hopefully see that with in the next season. But yeah, I do. I, I, I get what you mean by it. I think it's just elevating the genre so much by being able to weave in, you know, other influences. And I and I really love seeing that. Um, you know, I'd love to ask a little bit about the set and what it just sounds like. It's obviously such a, a great um, cast and, and you guys have a lot of fun. Um, is there one particular person who has surprised you the most perhaps either with their performance or, or behind the scenes? Oh, Jane, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, Toby, <laughs> Toby's the jokester of us right. all. Which I love. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A little I mean, unexpected. I, I mean, I don't know about it because I didn't get to work with these people, but I do think some of the, the comedy the high level of comedy guest stars that have come in has been very unique and highly, mm. uh, Haley usually has the highly intensive time with them. Right. Right. Cause the, uh, the character of Emily is always the one that goes off with them, whether they're real or, right. or um, imaginative, imaginative in her mind. I'm not saying that right, but you know what I mean? I, yeah, no, no, you are. I, um, I, you know, it's so funny. I have to say, I can't wait to talk about season three. <laughs> that is very much where my, where my mind is right now. And there are, there are yeah. answers that I have for you pertaining to season three that I can't wait to share with you. But <laughs> I will say as far as shoot, I don't know. It's very hard. I, I, I have to say that one thing that, that has you know occurred to me more during season three, I think uh, that has been happening through one and two as well, you know, as I mentioned before, this show touches on subjects that are equally as funny and wild and, and absurd mm-hmm. as they are heartbreaking and tragic and, and um, dark. Uh, and I think that regardless of where we are at on that spectrum uh, when we're shooting, it, the moments in between takes are always kept alive by whether it's Toby's jokes or whether it's us sidebarring or whether it's us constantly having this, this rapport that has not, that has only become stronger. Um, You know, it's, it's easy to, you know, I've been on things before where, you know, they call cut and then there's like a couple like, you know, it's awkward, you know, silence, or there's just, you know, weird energy uh, in Mm -hmm. between and you, you, you feel awkward. um, And then you have to like jump back into something. And, and weirdly where I think in between takes uh, we've had people on set where I feel like they're like, man, they're like, so not, you know, staying in it, but we are, I think it's just, it's about keeping it alive. And we, we really feed off of each other. And I, I, I feel as though I have, you know, leaned on, on my, on all my castmates, you know, uh, with this last season, um, just with all the history that we now have and the growth that we have all experienced as as people, but uh, more importantly, in this case, as, as characters, um, it's just, it's been really wonderful to have everybody kind of really find their own in this show. And, um, yeah, I think that's kind of cool. Yeah. 
No, I, I think that's awesome. I, I have to say, I, I really actually love seeing the uh, kind of evolution of Emily and Sue's relationship, um, mm. especially in season two, um, because both of them individually go through so much. Um, and I'm just curious to know kind of, you know, what what you sort of, how you interpret that relationship and how what you guys wanted to portray with it in season two. That that relationship between Emily and Sue is is unlike any a relationship I've ever played out on screen. Um, it's it's so heartbreaking and so beautiful and so messy and complicated. And even in its most complicated moments, it is there is such a true love there and a true alignment and connection and understanding that Emily has nowhere else with anyone else in, in her life. Um, and, and I, you know, have realized that that's a hard thing to come by to mm -hmm. now, you know? Um, and Ella and I, since day one have, have, and only more so as time has gone on, but we've, we've had this really wonderful opportunity and ability to, have these conversations with each other about what we want this to look like and what we want this to be. And of course, with Elena having written all of it so perfectly on the paper, uh, it doesn't feel like we've had to do a whole lot uh, because it's all so, it's there. Um, but it's been really great to, you know, have these scenes that do continue to challenge us that, that you know, we see on the page and we think, okay, this is, this is, uh, this is what uh, sets a whole lot um, into motion here and, and, you know, we'll do a few takes of something and look at each other and, and realize that this isn't it. This isn't what we want it to, we know what this stuff looks like now. We know what we want it to feel like, and we know what we want others to feel from it. Um, and, and we, we challenge each other um, to do what we know we have to do to get there because we know what that, what that looks like for, for us and for this show now, or at least we have an idea. Um, so it's, it's been a really, really beautiful thing to play out and to continue making discoveries about uh, and a relationship I, I will forever be grateful I, I got to play through. Yeah, I love, and, and you're right, we don't get to see these kinds of relationships, but it feels incredibly real, I think, for, for many of us, you know, a lot of our friendships with the women in our lives, you know, um, quite. You, I, I think that's probably, to me, what felt so, so compelling about this show, watching those two and, and the journey they go on um, mm. is, is beautiful, and, and I, I really love it. Um, so we're coming up to the end of this, so I really want to look forward now to season three. I know you can't say too much, but <laughs> you've certainly teased it, and um, I'd love to know, you know, kind of, what you are both excited to do with your characters. And obviously as this world gets a little bit bigger, you know, what you're both sort of excited to, to do and what you're both looking forward to doing. Um, like Jane, for you, you know, what, what could we maybe see with Mrs. Dickinson <laughs> in, the, in this next chapter? I have to say, I am thrilled with season three because I think Mrs. Dickinson has a lot of gold. Uh, I've been given a lot yeah. of beautiful scenes, a lot of uh, wonderful comedic moments coming up in season three and um, a lot of great time with the, the key cast members. Mm -hmm. A lot of wonderful scenes within our core group um, in nice. season three. And the biggest gift of season, season three is that we were even able to make it. You know, we Absolutely. are filming it amongst the pandemic mm -hmm. uh, with all the pandemic rules in place and protocols. And our crew is tirelessly standing for 13 to 15 hours a day wearing masks. We're all getting tested and swiped and everything they've got to do three to four, maybe sometimes five times a week when we have to, wow. um, to make sure everyone's healthy. And so the, uh, the greatest gift of season three is that we were able to make it and we were able to make it now. And that means it'll come to everybody 
um, sooner rather than later. And um, I think it was such a great time for all the main cast members to really bond. We now do know our characters and wherever Elena wants to take them, we understand them deep enough to be able to fly mm -hmm. with wherever they're gonna go. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I'm personally very thankful for the beautiful scenes I get with Haley in season three and I'll let Haley tease more <laughs> the other way, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to everybody seeing that too. Um, I, I, I just have to absolutely agree that the, the greatest gift is, is, is being able to make this thing. Um, I've never experienced in my career being able to live with a character for this long. And I think that is a gift mm. in and of itself as well. Um, I do feel so, you know, uh, like Jane said, we know these characters now and, and we can, we can, you know, play with them uh, in ways we haven't been able to in the past because we, because of how well we know them. But this season, uh, I, I am particularly excited for people to see um, the growth in Emily. There has been a tremendous amount just between episode uh, uh, seasons one and, and two, but uh, substantial, substantially more uh, growth has has occurred um, when we when we see her in season three. When we pick up with her and and with where we end, um, I'm I'm very much looking forward to that. I don't know how to talk about it without. <laughs> without getting too far into it where somebody's <laughs> going to get mad at me, but um, just very, very feel very lucky to, to have made this show and to be a part of something so wonderful for the last three, four years, um, three seasons. Uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward to hopefully speaking with you about that in a few yeah. or whenever. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I know you can't say much, but I think, you know, being able to make it and like you said, make it during the pandemic, um, is is truly a feat and um, I think it's incredible. Uh, I guess I, I would probably want to wrap up with this show has been so well received. Uh, obviously, it makes sense. You know, it's hard though. There's there's so much content out there now. Uh, so many shows are coming out across so many. So even getting eyeballs is difficult, you know, but this show has broken through and, and you know, especially for Apple, it broke through early and it got a lot of recognition. What do you think it is about, you know, the show and the content and the characters uh, and the world it brings? What do you think it is about all of that that seems to really be resonating with the audience in 2021? Jane? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still thinking about my answer. Yeah. It's very interesting. You know, I, I don't know about Hilly, but this is, I, I mean, I, yeah, I think this is the, we're playing people of, real people. We're playing people mm -hmm. who are a part of our history. Mm -hmm. um, and Mrs. Dickinson has not really been depicted to any great depth prior. So then that gives me a bit of freedom, a bit yeah. more freedom. I think for Haley to um, get to explore em Emily, the famous poet, Emily Dickinson, in, in such a modern light and with so much new information that we've learned about Emily or, mm -hmm. you know, the experts have put together as what they believe was the true story of Emily Dickinson is an honor. Um, I've been a big fan of Emily Dickinson's poetry for so long. And it is, it is fun to delve into what I think ultimately is quite a quirky family mm -hmm. um, from back in the day. And I think... I think ultimately this is going to be a show whenever people find it. I uh, Hopefully it'll be on the streaming platform for a very long time because that's what happens now. But I think that we'll be very proud of. Yeah. It is, it's very artistically done. Um, I think everybody performs it beautifully. It's designed beyond. And I think its uniqueness in its storytelling structure can endure and I, I I feel like I personally will be very proud to have been a part of this show um, as as people find it when they find it. That makes sense, yeah. Ooh, <laughs> same. <laughs> I, I, I will say um, uh, that I do think, you know, part, part of this show really challenges the way people think about certain things. And mm -hmm. I, I have had the unbelievable opportunity on on you know multiple accounts of meeting younger people who have seen this show and hearing what it is that they that this show makes them feel and that to me is I mean ultimately why I feel like I do what I do I have those moments where I you know I, I got to make something that I had so much fun making that I am so incredibly proud of that made someone feel less alone or, or, mm -hmm. you know, um, 
and made someone feel uh, or, or help them better understand why they're feeling the way they're feeling uh, at, at a very confusing time in their life. Mm-hmm. Um, that is something that I think is really awesome about this show. It, it has, it's, it's made people feel um, seen. It's challenged the way some people have thought about the certain things uh, or, or it's, it's, helped them alter the way that they think about or feel about certain things. I also think there's elements in this show from the language to uh, the music that are, are very captivating uh, and um, weird ultimately, which I, I know I'm into. Um, and, and I just think that this show has so much going on that it's a hard one not to dive into. And once you do, you get sucked in and, and, um, there's a lot of depth to it, which I think when once you realize that it's it's hard to uh, mm-hmm. not acknowledge that and, and be a fan of that. So, um, yeah, I just, yeah. Love that. Yeah. I'm all beautifully inspired by the words of Emily Dickinson. Mm-hmm. That's right. And her poetry. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, thank you both so much for being here today, for giving us a sort of peek behind the curtains of um, Dickinson season two. Um, It's been such a pleasure to speak to you both. And uh, I'm really excited to to get into season three, hopefully soon and and go through. But right now, I think season two, uh, especially because many of us probably came to it during, you know, the past year, it was Mm. a really wonderful show to have during a, a sort of difficult year where I think a lot of us were perhaps or at least I was you know going through like identity sort of you know things like what do you do with yourselves when a lot of things are stripped away mm-hmm. and I felt like it was really wonderful to see these characters in this world also kind of going on this journey of discovering themselves so I love that well, thank, awesome. you. Thank, thank you thank you thank you both so much appreciate your time today um thank you for joining us on conversations at home of course thanks for having us <laughs> thank you both this is so Bye. great